Now here's our setup. We've bolted our or uh, can locked our faceplate to the spindle of the machine. Uh, check that this is tight. And before I started, I just bored that centre out a little bit more to give us room for the boring bar to go through. Just needed a little bit more clearance here for the tool so that we can face the end. Alright, so we can now put the connecting rod in place. Put the set screw in the end. And set up our bridge clamp. Leave that loose there like that to set up. We get our wrench here and just tighten our, our clamp up. And we just take that up so that we take all the slop out of it. That's pretty good there. Now <coughs> Just tap that up so that the connecting rod is just against that face. I can feel it just touching there. Don't want to take it too far or we tip the rod or tip the connecting rod out of alignment. Just take it so that it touches. Now we can actually, it's firm enough there to position that and to spin it. Now we centralise it. surface gauge and we just put it on the edge there and swing it around and it's come out that's the high spot take it back and we can just move it half that distance A bit more. <clears throat> and we've evened that up, that looks good. We now nip this top gudgeon pin up, just tighten it up. Check our setup again. Yeah, that's good. That'll be good. Now if I look down the side here, I've got all this paper here to collect all the, the uh, white metal shavings so I can reuse them again. I don't want to mix them up with my steel shavings. But if I look down here, I can see that one of these webs here is touching this bridge clamp. Um, the webs are tapered and they're uneven this way, so there'll be one point that'll be touching that. Now I picked that point at this bottom point here, and I'll just get the camera and show you where that point is. Now you can just see the light through there. You can see it through the, um, through the connecting rod. So what we've got to do is just tighten this side up, nip the bridge vent there, and this is the one we put the force on. Uh, 
and there we are and you can see we can still see that light there again and this is to make sure we don't twist the rod now I can move the carriage up okay and now select the tool. I, I always use high-speed steel for, um, for white metal. It's very soft and I can get it a very sharp angle here. I bring it to about 20 degrees and very sharp. Use my hone stone here and make sure that's honed right up to a fine edge. Okay, that can go in. Tighten the tool up. Bring the carriage up. Everything clear there. Everything's right. Select the speed. About 175 is okay. And we'll take a cut. Now that's got to come out to about 45 millimetres, so we've got 5 millimetres to come out with that. So we can just turn a small bit down at the front here to the to the um, to our des our uh, designated roughing size, which is 45 millimetres. So I take the the cross light out two and a half millimetres.
there we are out to 45 we've got to go about another half a millimetre to finish up so we can rough that through at that um, diameter So there we are, we've roughed it out to within uh, a half a millimetre, the size, looks alright. Now we'll just take a small cut and check the finish of the, uh, of the tool. Now I'm happy with that, nice finish, no chatter. Now we can get our gauges, telescopic gauges, or our uh, <coughs> internal fixed gauges there, and get our size. We want to take that out to about five hundredths of a millimetre above size four to five hundredths of a millimetre, that's uh, one and a half to two thousandth of an inch in the old system and that should give us good clearance. Okay, we'll go and do that.